Clicks. A real keyboard for the iPhone, as Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile, one of the company's founders, calls it. Sounds and looks interesting, but whenever a well-known YouTuber is involved in promoting a product, we, viewers, have some questions. Let me go first. Did they force you to do it? Did they force? Yes. Yes, I was imprisoned, and they said, look, unless you carry an iPhone and build a keyboard case for it, we're never going to let you out. We're never going to give you back your foldable. Think about something like, like an Instagram live uh, stream. You've got you know, your, your content on the screen, and then you want to be engaging with your audience. But your on-screen keyboard takes up 50% of the screen real estate. So by moving your keyboard off screen with something like clicks, you get all of your screen back for apps and content. And plus, there's all sorts of really cool shortcuts um, built into the keyboard that allow you to just navigate through your phone that much more easily. I think people joke around a lot that I'm an Android guy and what would it take for you to carry an iPhone? And I'm like, well, I sure would like to bring back a physical keyboard. So. Clicks connects to iPhone through either Lightning or uh, USB-C. And as soon as you plug it in, iPhone recognizes it as an external keyboard and uh, we can tie right into the iOS uh, native keyboard, but you know, use it as an external accessory. So we didn't have to do any of that work. We're just tapping into the infrastructure that already exists in iOS. You can charge your iPhone as you normally would through either the Lightning or the USB-C port. You get pass-through charging. Um, and while we don't have a MagSafe magnet built in, you do get MagSafe pass-through. So every night, I charge my phone with one of the Apple MagSafe pucks. I drop it on, it aligns perfectly, you hear the little and then it starts charging. So for me, it's not a big deal. So I got a phone call in April of last year from Crackberry Kevin, longtime friend of mine, helped me build Mr. Mobile, and he said, I'm working on something, but if I tell you about it, you can't tell anyone, or I'm gonna have to kill you, and then I'm gonna go to jail, so don't do that. Okay, he sends me a 3D render of what eventually became this product, and I said, short-sightedly, because I'm not a smart businessman, or I wasn't, I wanna do the first video on that, please. And he said, yeah, of course. But then we just talked over and over and more and more and weeks stretched on and it made no sense for me not to be involved with actually bringing it to market. So Kevin brought me on, we became co-founders, we brought on a lot of smart people to add to the smart people who were already there before us. And now we're in January, we have clicks for iPhone. And I'm really happy because I actually am really proud of it. You know, you're, you're adding a little bit of real estate at the bottom, but people have become accustomed to large format touch devices. And so most of the time when people pick it up, they just hold it like they would any other large screen uh, smartphone, you know, with kind of their pinkies at the bottom and their, hand, their fingers like this. And it just feels, it feels balanced, it feels solid in the hand. And you know, the issue, I can put it in my pocket and you know, it's not that big of a deal. This is what I love. We're, we're as a team, we're like, you gotta go buttons out. Right? Like own the keyboard, just own it. What are the reactions other than what phone is it? So here's, here's the thing. It piques everybody's curiosity. If you used a button phone in the past, you immediately understand the benefit of buttons. You get it. You understand why you would want buttons on your touchscreen. But for people who have never used a keyboard phone, they're really intrigued. It's something new, it's something different, and they're open to it. People love their iPhones, they love their touch screens, they love their big screens, but something was lost when we lost our buttons. We lost like a physical, tactile connection with whatever we're creating. And the truth is, there are a lot of things today that people just wait to do until they get back onto a keyboard or a computer, and now you can do them on your phone with clicks. And does it consume any of uh, the phone's battery or? It consumes just a little bit of battery. So when we tested it under like an extreme typing use case where, where you know, the, the keyboard's being used for four hours straight, uh, it, it, it takes 2% of the battery to, to, to use it. And if you, if you add the backlight, because there is a backlight here, um, then that adds like about another 2% consumption. So you're looking at like, just over 4%, you know, if, you're, if you were typing on the keyboard for four hours with the backlight on the whole time. Clix is available today for iPhone 14 Pro uh, and iPhone 15 Pro, you can order those and you can pre-order now for uh, 15 Pro Max. What's next for Clix? 
So I have been um, restricted by grown-ups because uh, I'm the child of the company, and they're all they, they've all buttoned my mouth, sewn my mouth shut. But I will say this: Look, we launched a company, not just a product, and we do have a long roadmap of fun things that I can't wait to bring to market. Clicks can be a lot of things. It doesn't have to be just what we've launched today, which is very nice. But I'm not allowed to give you specifics. But it's coming from me. It's probably going to be a little odd, a little quirky and a little more useful than you might expect. There is uh, probably a lot of optimism, but did you approach any skeptics? Did any of your friends say, dude, what are you doing? Of course, of course. There are tons of, of skeptics, and I respect skeptics because I take a skeptical view of a lot of tech. It's also, it, look, it's not for everybody. We're not trying to sell this to every iPhone user. We're trying to sell this to maybe one in 500 iPhone users. It's a niche product from a guy who loves niche products. What's the problem?